Dylan Boucher joins us. He is the Basketball New Zealand CEO. Welcome to the show, mate. Hey, man. How are you, mate? I'm bloody good. Before we get on to the Stephen Adams stuff, I know it's um, 20 years there or thereabouts. Uh, I think it's Monday, whenever the tournament started. But the most important thing is celebrating that glorious run at the World Championships with you, Pero, Sparky Dickel, Phil Jones. Man, I saw some highlights of it the other day. What memories that is. Oh, it brings back great memories, all right, and a special group and just some fun times to be wearing the black singlet. More than that, did you honestly think when you went to the tournament that you could win it because you played like you did? Well, to be honest, when we went there, we knew we could upset some teams. We probably didn't probably truly believe we could win it, but as the tournament went on, we went, man, we could actually, we could do this. We could actually win this thing if we, we play well. And um, unfortunately, we had some lapses in the in the games that counted that we weren't able to capitalise on the on, on the leads we had and ended up um, losing in crucial games. Yeah, Pero said, especially against Yugoslavia, we kind of, I mean, it was not like we, we blew that game, but there, were, there was an opportunity there, wasn't it? And they went on to win it. Massive opportunity, absolutely. They went on to win it and we, we had them on the ropes and unfortunately they put a bit of pressure on and, and really attacked us on the rebounds and just we, just we just didn't finish that game how we know we possibly could have and how we had it in other games in that tournament. You beat China with Yao Ming, mate. I mean, when you're on the court with this guy, I mean, he could, he could have held the ball above your head and just walked down the court, couldn't he? He literally can, yeah. I mean, the the most intimidating thing with Yao Ming when we first played him one time in China is he was doing his calf stretches on the backboard. Um, <laughs> that's pretty intimidating when you look down the other end. <laughs> I only just got that. He was, what? What? <laughs> yeah, literally had his palms on the backboard and doing his calf stretches on the backboard. Wow. Which is which is crazy wow. when you think of that, you know, yeah. and, and and he can you know he can touch the rim without even jumping, so that sums up how you know how hard it is to score around him in a game. Look, this okay. Let's get on to the Stephen Adams thing. The story um, again yesterday, and it seems to do the recycled rounds every time he comes back into the country. So, what is the story at the moment? Have you been able to speak to him directly, or do you have to go through his team? No, nah, I've got a great relationship with Stephen, and normally we would speak directly, um, and we'd catch up most times when he's back. Unfortunately, our diaries haven't aligned this time around, so I haven't spoken him on this trip back. Uh, but certainly, the dialogue's open, um, and you know we're we're certainly having those conversations that we need to have. But um, you know, we we're pretty um, we're pretty relaxed in, in the fact that you know when he comes back home, he has to has to do his family thing. He has to has to spend time with his family and friends. We want him to relax when he comes back to New Zealand, so we don't just want to pepper him with. When are you playing? When are you playing? When are you playing? And that's probably what people expect we would be doing. But we respect his privacy. We respect that, uh, you know, he, he's coming home to relax. But at the same time, you know, we have got an open dialogue with him going at the moment um, that we want to... He knows we want him. Um, everyone in the world knows we want him. Um, so it's just about just continuing those conversations going to make sure we can, when the time is right, that we're ready to pull the trigger. BBNZ CEO Dylan Boucher is with us. Has he, has he at any time said to you that he wants to play? Like, actually use those words, I want to play for New Zealand. I'll, I'll probably reframe that by saying he's never said the words he doesn't want to play. Um, he's, he's, he's talked about playing, um, but he's never ever said to me, I don't want to play for the Tall Blacks. So okay. that's, I take that as a, that's all I need is a green light to keep having those conversations with him. How late would you leave it? We've got the World Championships next year, and by that I mean to integrate him into the team and everything. Would it be a situation where if it did happen that you would be happy for him just to walk straight into that World Championship team on site? Oh, to be honest, that's probably a Piero question. Um, okay. he, you know, he runs the team. For me, for me, I'd be more than happy for him to walk straight in, but again, I don't, I'm not responsible for uh, making sure the team dynamics are all there. So um, it would be a question with Piero, but I think when you have a calibre player of him, and it's not like he's just sitting out doing nothing. He's, he's playing a pretty pretty important NBA season. So um, for us, I think, you know, like the, the time of the NBA finishing and him joining, he's no matter what happens, he's going to be joining the group late no matter what. Well, have you spoken with with, uh, with Piero and the players and got any feedback from them? Yeah, I, stopped, I mean, Piero and I talk about it a lot. Um, you know, we talk about all, all the players a lot um, and, you know, and what he's thinking. So, yeah, absolutely, I mean... Like I say, with a quality player like Stephen, yeah, if you added him to your roster, it makes your team a hell of a lot better for sure. Oh, well, that's my next question. Oh, we also, but, Sorry. But, 
but in, but in saying that, you know, like it's it's, it's like anyone, right? We um, same with injuries. You always you always work with what you got, and you know we've got a really good, really strong team that are playing some great basketball right now. So if there was uh, if he wasn't available, then you know we would carry on as business as usual. Yeah, because that's you know that, that's I suppose what I'm getting at. That you know players like yourself were so selfless when you're playing for New Zealand. You played so goddamn hard for so many years. I don't know that if you got paid. I can't imagine if you got paid, you got paid stuff all if you did anyway. But, you know, so to him to come into that team, you know, for somebody's going to miss out and, and actually after all the effort that they've put in, which is going to be a bit stink, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's, it's unfortunate. It's one of those situations, and, and that happens quite often with them, um, and especially at the moment because we play so many windows. There's guys, you know, there's guys that played in the game, you know, a couple of nights ago that, you know, they, they booked our tickets to the World Cup. They, those guys may not be in that final team because we've still got, I think someone someone wrote an article. There was ten players missing from that group that could potentially make it. So you that you're all of a sudden you're up to a squad of twenty two of players that have pulled on the black singlet in the last kind of three years, and then you add Stephen to that mix as well. So I mean, let's. I mean, the the thing is, we're not we're not sitting there waiting um, for for Stephen to make his decision. We'll continue on just without him at the moment, and then if the opportunity arises that he has an NBA season where his body feels good and he feels like he's ready to put on the black singlet, then, then we'll start working around the logistics of how that could actually work. Do you buy into this thing that the mainstream media continually trot out about how he uh, was insulted when he was a kid and he didn't, you know, the, the financial hardship and all of that kind of stuff? I just feel it's just such a tired old thing. I mean, you know what your life is like, mate. Do you really sulk about anything that happened 15 years ago? I can't imagine a guy like him gives a stuff about that, even if it was true. I've never had that conversation with him, um, so I don't know. Um, but, you know, the conversations I've had with him, certainly, again, um, Piero and, and I have a good relationship with Stephen, and, you know, I don't... that Those things that happened years ago, he's not going to hold that against him, Piero and I, so I think that's the that's the key part of it here, is what happened at Basketball New Zealand when he was a kid is, is totally different to the situation we're in now. So, um, you know, again, I think it's just, again, it's just opening those conversations and, and can, if there is some some issues still there, then we can talk those through and work out how those can, how we can get through them. Yeah, Dylan Boucher, Basketball New Zealand CEO with us. Well, it's so good to hear because every time I read that or, the, you know, the media trots that out, I just think, oh, stop this. I mean, really, you know, I mean, the, look at where the guy is. His whole life has changed. Why would he care about something, you know, that did happen and whether or not it did happen? Who who, who knows? Do you feel like you're... You're, you're pandering to him at all, or is that an unfair kind of question? And that, as you've explained, it's just if it can happen, yeah, green light go. But if it can't, well, that's just reality. No, nah, totally unfair to say we're pandering. I think the, the key thing here is whenever you've got a player in the NBA, didn't say when we had Sean Marks, you know, Sean Marks didn't play in a lot of the, the tournaments that we played in. I mean, we qualified for the World Cup without Sean Marks when, in 2002, and then he joined the team. Um, for the tour going to the to the World Cup, so it's no different um, in this situation. And these these guys, are, and I explain to people, these guys play 82 regular season games. I mean, no one in this country plays that many games, even in, including internationals. So we have to be really sympathetic to his his body, and also being a seven foot guy lugging around a body like that in 82 games is, is tough. Um, and your body does need a rest. And I think people don't quite realise that in New Zealand, the taxing how taxing it is on your body. Um, they say it's a non-contact sport, but if you've ever seen Stephen Adams play a game of basketball, you'll realise you know the amount of contact he has, and that's tough work for 82 games a year. How important is he to New Zealand basketball, just image-wise, Dylan? Because the more I think about it, the more I think uh, you know it's, whether he plays or doesn't. The fact is that every single kid that loves basketball in this country, and I know it's just exploding the numbers in front of you, and that they all know who he is, regardless of whether he wears a tall black singer. Mate, he has done so much for New Zealand basketball. You know, like a lot of our growth, we can put down to Stephen Adams playing in the NBA. He has made everyone in New Zealand realise it's a reality that they could make the NBA. Um, so you're right. Whether he pulls on the black thing or not, what he's done for this country and how he's represented not only basketball but represented New Zealand with, you know, how he goes about his business is is so much that we can be proud of, you know, whether, whether he pulls on the black thing or not. So... If he never pulled on a black singlet, I would certainly not have anything against him. You no, know, I, I wouldn't would either. Why I would perfectly understand it. You know, look, I use Chris Wood as an example who travels all over the world, just absolutely obsessed with playing for the All Whites and things. But these guys have to make their own decisions. And, and you know, none of us, unless we walk in those shoes, can understand that. I mean, and that's just the reality of it. He's a professional athlete and he's committed to, to what he's doing and, and also where he is. That's just, that's just it, isn't it? Have you spoken to Sean Marks lately and asked him about his... B B B F F K D. I actually have spoken to Sean um, just just via text, not via or anything other than text. But um, 
you know, I was talking to him around some of the 2002 stuff and we didn't really talk, didn't go through the KD stuff at all. It's just more just chatting about how he's going. And, you know, he's a busy man over there, but, mate, he's doing it on the, again, another guy who couldn't be more proud of him just for what he's doing as a Kiwi, but let alone being a basketball guy in the best league in the world. And also, it's just, I mean, you, you know him well. I've met him a number of times. That Every time I, I see him and I see his name come up, right, you're just watching Sports Centre or something, they talk about the general manager, Sean Marks. I think that's Sean. You know, and here he is negotiating with Kyrie and KD and Steve Nash and stuff. You know, it's wild. It's, cra- it's crazy. It's crazy when you think of it. And, um, you know, you've, you've been around the sports scene a long time to know how, you know, how much stress is in these jobs. This guy's dealing with an incredible amount of stress and pressure. Um, you know, yes, he's dealing with, you know, probably billions of dollars, um, but the amount of pressure that's on him to, to win with that team is, is incredible. And, you know, he's doing it, holding his head high and doing it with dignity at the moment. A couple of more questions. We'll let you go. This is Dylan Boucher with us. Um, you know, we spent a, a fair bit of time um, just uh, absolutely all over the Sales Basketball League, and I know that the Toiwi League's gone really well in that. How, how just buzzed out are you at the moment for where New Zealand basketball is at? Man, it's in a great spot. Like, it really is. I mean, we've got a groundswell um, in the community space of, of participation numbers growing. Um, like you say, our, our top leagues in this country, the Sales NBO and GJ Gardner Toehi, are, are going crazy. We've, um, you know, we've obviously got pay parity across both men's and women's in those programs. And, you know, we're starting to see the fruits of that label. We're seeing young girls want to come along and watch these, these girls play basketball. And we're seeing young boys come along and wanting to watch the superstars in the, in the sales NBL as well. So, you know, like right now, and, and you know, just been in, um, on the court today watching um, some of the some of the high school teams going head-to-head trying to qualify for nationals. And, man, there's some talent on display, and we've got some good young talent coming through. I'm seeing, you know, and, um, I see on Facebook, I've got, you see 15, 14, 15-year-olds 15 dunking on people. It's like, that stuff never happened back in our day. So the athletes coming through are, are far... Um, more athletic than what we were, bigger, um, and they're taking the games more serious from a younger age. So we're seeing, you know, basketball's in a really good position right now. Yeah, look, I saw, I can't remember who the young lad, the 17 year old from St. Ken's, was playing for Auckland. You know who I'm talking about, right? The 17 year old? Yeah, playing for Auckland. Dante Russo now? Yeah, man. Just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just right. what a super talent that guy is. And then I, I came across a photo the other day of another two um, that were going off to play college basketball. How many have we got playing college basketball, boys and girls, over in the States at the moment? I uh, don't have the exact number, but it's probably up around 150 kids at the moment that are wow. in college basketball at the moment playing. Yeah, and you look at a guy like a kid like Dante, and you know he's an amazing player. He actually led the sales NBL in steals this year. So a 17 year old kid leads the league in steals. You know, nearly three a game, which is, you know, that that makes my heart warm because that was my kind of category that I always tried to win. So you know, you see a young kid that has that potential, um, and he's still in his year 13 year at St Kent. Yeah. I tell you what, though, if you tried that when you were playing, mate, I just know what would have happened. There would have been a couple of nudges. <laughs> there? there would have been a, the old Dylan Boucher would have come out, mate, as well would have happened. I know that. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to catch him these days, mate, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, look, congratulations on all the success so far. Um, you know, we've actually uh, found out today as well that Dame Val and also Dame Nolene and Don Tricker have all been added to the High Performance Sport New Zealand board. And I just thought they're three wonderful additions. Hopefully this translates into some extra funding because if they're not seeing exactly what you're doing with your sport, well, they're blind, mate. Yeah, I agree. And um, I think, you know, those are three good appointments. I saw that as well. And, yeah, I thought that, you know, really positive moves. So really excited. No, all the very best for the rest of it. Break is starting again, mate. I love the sport. You know that. And congratulations on everything that's happened so far this year. You deserve it. Thank you, Dylan. No, I appreciate it, Martin. Good chatting. All right. There you go, people. That's Dylan Boucher, CEO of BBNZ. Straight up dude, answers the questions. Oh, that's all I needed to know. Um, I'm happy with that, you know. Maybe my beef is actually more with the stupid mainstream media and their continuous recycling of this boring angle and these boring stories, you know. I mean, he's ex- exactly what I would have thought. Stephen Adams wouldn't give a ab- rats about what happened 15 or 16 years ago, mm. you know. And if you don't play, you don't play. Because as Dylan says, I mean, the what New Zealand basketball have enthused out of him and his and his profile. Because I'm not sure, I mean, you were growing up at a time when Sean Marks was playing and he won a ring, remember, off the bench, but he won a ring. Um, cause he was Spurs. Play- yeah, for the Spurs. Did you know a lot about him? Were you aware of him at the time? No. Okay, so you're shaking your head. Stephen Adams, to me, is the the first New Zealander that has got... Two- I'd, heard, I'd heard of Kirk Penny, though. Oh, yeah, well, okay, most of us had. Okay, so you'd heard of because of his college career? Yeah. 
But you see, but like, I, I knew he'd been. It was very brief, but I knew he'd been in the NBA as well. But before Chris Wood came along, like, did you know anything about Winton and what he had done? No, no, not at all. I wonder it was the such first a shame. That time would have been Ryan Nelson for me. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah. But what Ryan Nelson did for New Zealand football, just by being in that league, mm. like all of a sudden, and then becoming a captain, like, and then Winston Reid becoming a captain. I mean, the idea that a, a New Zealand New Zealander can be a captain of a Premier League side, that's just insane, mate. It shouldn't happen. We shouldn't be able to wriggle through that. But that's my point about Stephen Adams, is that I just think that whether he plays or not, New Zealand basketball, are just you know, it's such a bonus for him, for them, that he's in the league, isn't it? Yeah. And, I've, and Dylan said it there, Dylan Boucher said it there, where he doesn't need to put on the black singlet to still have a huge impact on there a national go. game. The, the, boom, the boom of the NBA and the boom of basketball as a whole since, probably, since about 2013, 2014 has been because of Stephen Adams. Well, I mean, that's, when I hear it from the horse's mouth, that just explains a hell of a lot to me, and that actually just makes me feel a whole lot better about it because the way these stories are continually written up, on the mass media sites. It's, sound, you know, it's written with an angle that he doesn't want to play. And by the sounds of it, that's actually not the case. He hasn't said he doesn't want to play. It's just, can, he act can it actually ever happen? Who knows? And if it doesn't, that's okay.